Good day. Have you ever wondered why and how Lesotho even exists? Lesotho is a country enclave completely within the borders of what is now modern day South Africa. How did that take place? Why isn't Lesotho part of the Union of South Africa? Well, it goes back to the 1820s. Shaka Zulu had completely revolutionized African warfare by replacing the throwing spear with the stabbing spear. The result of that technological change was huge internecine warfare going on between many of the African tribes, sometimes encouraged by the Arabic slave traders coming down from what is now modern day Mozambique. In 1824, King Mshweshwe of the Basutu people came here to Tabu Bwasu, which is a flat top mountain, 1.6 kilometers long and one kilometer wide. And he turned this into a fortress for the protection of his people. He was able to defend strongly and aggressively against the African tribes. And then came the Boers. In 1868, King Mshweshwe did one of his most clever moves. He petitioned the British for protection. And the British, needing help against the Boers, were more than happy to divide and conquer. British protectorate stayed for the Basutu people until 1966. The Basutu people got their own kingdom, the kingdom of Lesotho. Modern day Lesotho has evolved from an absolute monarchy in 1966 to a constitutional monarchy now. The economy is very, very strongly tied to the economy of South Africa. It is a country that still has a lot of poverty and most people earn their incomes from industries in South Africa. So there's not that much industry here. Lesotho, when you're in South Africa, is well worth a visit. Welcome to Swaziland as I sit beside this beautiful little mountain stream. Swaziland and Lesotho are often spoken about in the same breath. Both tiny little countries, almost completely subsumed by South Africa. In the case of Swaziland, about three quarters of the border, maybe a bit more, and the border with Mozambique. Similar to Lesotho, the Swazi kings of the 1900s came here to set up their own kingdoms, defending themselves from attacks of by not only other African tribes and the Boers, but also in the case of Swaziland, the Portuguese who were busy colonizing Mozambique and the Arabic slave traders coming down from the north. Like the Lesotho kings, the Swazi kings petitioned the British for protection, so Swaziland became a British protectorate. That British protectorate lasted until the early part of the second half of the 20th century, when like Lesotho, Swaziland got its independence. However, unlike Lesotho, Swaziland has not evolved into a constitutional monarchy. Swaziland is still an absolute monarchy ruled by the king with very, very few political freedoms in this country. It is also the country with the highest HIV infection rate in the world at 28.8%. Also, 33% of women have suffered sexual abuse or rape by the age of 18. So clearly, there are a number of issues that Swaziland needs to deal with. On the positive side, Swaziland is beautiful. It's a lot greener than Lesotho, has a lot more rainfall, it's a lot higher, it has some beautiful game and nature reserves. It has some beautiful vistas and views. It's a very, very beautiful country, Swaziland, packing a lot of beautiful things into a very small package. On the subject of big things in small packages is this. Sebebe Rock is the second largest rock in the world, second only to Uluru in Australia. On the positive side, it's worth visiting for the nature. On the negative side, you've really got to start to ask when is it going to come into the modern day for political freedoms, for dealing with HIV and for gender equality?